Welcome once again. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back to more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies, or for short, one and a half white guys. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, nonsense. And where are we right now? Oh, we rented an Airbnb out in, you know, uh, the Bay Area. Specifically in the vein of this movie, right? Not really, but I did find a basement that has like a rope coming out of the wall. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, well, we might have limited time on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All in reference of the movie we're doing today. How would you describe the movie we're reviewing today, Nick? Topical. Very topical. That's an easy way to describe it. I would describe this one as just a head fake of a movie. So, yes, in the vein of us being at an Airbnb, that are we or are we not? I mean, you'll never know. Maybe. We are doing we are doing last year's uh, horror hit Barbarian, directed by Zach Kreger of The Whitest Kids You Know. Very highly anticipated. The trailers were very good for this movie. Oh, Everyone I, was very curious. I was so excited when to see this. But before we get into that, let's formally introduce the movie. The movie we are doing today is Barbarian, released in 2022, directed by Zach Kreger, again, of The Whitest Kids You Know, starring Georgina Campbell as Tess, Pennywise this dancing clown, as Keith, a.k.a. Bill Skarsgård, Justin Long in a triumphant return to the horror genre. <laughs> a very as, triumphant return. As AJ and Richard Brake as a Michael Myers impersonator himself, Frank. Oh, Michael Myers does not stoop as low as Frank does in this movie. That's true. However, I would say he's like almost in Michael Myers cosplay. He's I was dressed just, exactly like him, except for the uh, mask. He's got his hair is all slicked back slicked like back, his yeah. too. Yeah, just in the in the boiler. Richard the boiler suit. Brake was in Rob Zombie's Halloween too. He's in a lot of Rob Zombie movies. He is in the scene that we often make fun of, where the uh, the coroner van is hauling Michael Myers away at the beginning of the movie. And it just runs into a cow on the road because it's the Midwest. Is that Halloween 2? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rob Zombie's Rob Halloween Zombie's 2 Halloween just two. runs into a cow and he's like stuck in the van because the van is just total to shit. Michael Myers gets out of the van and just cuts his head off with like a piece of glass. <laughs> and now he is the Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah. Of this movie. I was hoping... it Not cool, but I was kind of hoping you would just go like, Bill's Cars Guard is this. Justin Long is this, and Richard Brake as the... <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Do you want to lead us in with the IMDb summary of this movie? Yes, gladly. The Internet Movie Database summary of said movie, Barbarian. A woman staying at an Airbnb discovers that the house she has rented is not what it seems. That's a great... This is the greatest summary we've Good and vague, Yeah. <laughs> Because that, no that, one expects what happens in this is, movie. <laughs> that is exactly the movie. And, you know, I feel like this can actually lead us into our first segment in our past experiences with the movie. Because I, I, I believe we both saw this trailer, maybe not together, but separately. And this movie, essentially, the trailer depicts exactly what the IMDb summary is. There is already somebody at an Airbnb when Georgina Campbell's character, Tess, arrives. And that's it. That's all the move trailer shows. It's literally it. <sighs> ah! <laughs> you fuck. You got that. Yeah, right, I got fine, you good. Fine. I got you good. That time. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see this in theaters. You did, though. Yeah, I did. As soon as I heard it was a hit, I thought, oh, man, I should have gone. Yeah, it's a it's a unique experience seeing it in a crowd. Now, I'll definitely have a chance to talk about that as we go on. I got to see this at Alamo the first time as part of an advanced screening. I don't think it was even charged. I think it was free uh, <laughs> if you were like a member there. And I managed to grab a ticket or two for me and a friend. It's a good free movie. Yeah, it's a great. I had no idea what to expect with this movie. Uh, the first time I saw this, I was fucking blown away on how well this was done. I couldn't believe that Zach Kreger had done something like this. Zach Kreger being out of the whitest kid, you know, it, which is a sketch comedy group, which ran on uh, IFC uh, channel for a while. And honestly was one of the funniest guys on there. Yeah. Uh, he's most notable for his, where he plays the sketch with Trevor Moore about the gallon of PCP. Oh yeah. <laughs> My favorite is the, I'm sorry, but the grapist. 
Oh my god, <laughs> the greatest is he was no 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 that's He's the Trevor Moore is the one who is pitching the idea to him. Oh my Zach god, Prager you're right. Is the one who is going? Am I the only one who hears what's wrong with this? <laughs> he was he was trying to warn us about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah i i watched what i watched some widest kids you know back in middle school so yeah it's uh there's, it's definitely there's plenty of, there's plenty of good ones by and rest in peace to trevor, trevor Moore, Moore, dude. Yeah. yeah it's uh it's a shame but yeah so then you know i got to see this in theaters uh i guess this actually three times in theaters i, oh I went and watched god. it a few times and uh it i loved it just as much and you know it built some interesting reactions from the crowd each time. I remember watching it and just being very, very uh, enthralled and wowed with how well this was done. It reminds me very much, and uh, Zach Kreger even specifically stated this, that it's kind of like Audition. You've seen that movie? No. Okay, so Audition is a movie about something. It's Japanese. Japanese, about a billionaire, like, auditioning women for, like, his girlfriend. It's been a bit since I've seen it. Girlfriend or, or wife or something. Anyway, there's a just a just a giant twist in it that you don't see coming and it just flips it on his head. Uh, it very much feels like that. And Zach Craig even stated that he wrote this movie and felt like it specifically followed that archetype. So I watched this at Christmas time uh, last year nice, and it is nice. now an annual Christmas tradition. I'm kidding. I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> dude, white people do anything. <laughs> I didn't watch this with my girlfriend. She she would not like this movie. Yeah, I, I don't. I can imagine. There's I, a lot in this movie that made me uneasy, too. Like long, dark, underground hallways that it's, lead it's to a very nowhere. it's a very intense movie. It's a uh, claustrophobic movie at yeah, times. Definitely. Uh, Zach Kreger from the whitest kids, you know, as we said, comedy wrote this, but one of the people that gave him the most feedback was actually Jordan Peele on this movie. So Zach Kreger and Jordan Peele are friends and he would continually ask, uh, Jordan Peele to give him advice on basically the story, the horror and everything about it. Jordan Peele being most known for horror movies wise, get out us and now nope. And Key and Peele. And Key and Peele. Which is a, which, yeah, that, well, that makes a lot of sense because they are both from comedy. Comedy. Making very out there horror films. Absolutely. It, later in their career. So I was going to say Zach Krager's career is kind of matching Jordan Peele's. But now that you just mentioned that they are friends. Okay. Now, now that makes all the more sense. Yeah. And this is, you know, coming from me personally does as somebody who does stand up comedy kind of routinely, the, Two closest genres are comedy and horror because those two things have to deal with the absolute absurdity of life and the situations. You know, there's a very absurd factor about a serial killer running at you with a knife that that's all he wants to do is kill you. It's kind of crazy at the end of the day. It's, it's comedic because it's like, why would this happen to me specifically? Why is he after me? Of course this would happen to me. A character getting their hand snapped on by a mousetrap and seriously getting injured can be viewed in a really funny way. If the idea is you're trying to catch a mouse and this mouse is outwitting you, right? Mm -hmm. But that same I saw mouse hunt. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that same character can be it can be viewed in like the context of horror if you're trying to get out of a of a locked room and the serial killer puts a mouse trap under the door and you reach under to grab it and it snaps on your fingers. It's the same action, different con uh, context for all of it. Right. Mm. So horror and comedy go hand in hand. So the idea of a lot of comedians and people that work in comedy being able to write horror actually makes a lot of sense. You just remove what's funny about it in retrospect. That's good that you say that because there's a lot of humor in this movie. Oh, it, it's there, really there's, funny. A, there's, there's a lot of there's all I think there's more laughs than there are actual scares in the movie. Yeah. Even though it's a very, very disturbing movie. This is a very of the time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't describe it like scary, like horror horror. It's just very intense. And there's a lot of elements that make you very uneasy thinking about it after the movie, especially. And when you're in it, it's kind of hard to really focus on all of them. I think the most horrific parts of the movie are just their big shocking moments. Yeah. And I think the most horror comes from the third act, mostly. 
Yeah, once you learn the full it scope beca- of it. Yeah, it becomes it becomes a full blown horror movie yeah. by the by the very end of it. Yeah, I would agree. But you're not sure what to make of it early on, especially if you don't know what it is. Like, please just don't look up what happens in the movie. Just watch the trailer if you're interested. Watch the trailer and then go watch the movie. And if it interests you, yeah, it abs. You should. The trailer gives nothing away. Thankfully, yeah, it absolutely gives nothing away. And that's why this and this IMDb summary, that's why this movie works. And if you're interested in the movie, just watch it. Don't look up anything about it and just don't expect anything. No, go in with no expectations. And you'll be remarkably surprised how much you enjoy it or absolutely terrified and want to turn it off immediately. Yeah, it's safe to say you can probably guess we both really like this movie. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. (laughs) With that being said, should we get into the basic plot of the movie? The basic plot of the movie is uh, Tess, played by Georgina Campbell, is in town. She is she has gone to Detroit for a job interview. She's going to work for a documentary documentary filmmaker filmmaker. Um, she shows up at this Airbnb and in the dead of night. It's pouring rain and it's the only lit house in the neighborhood. I, Everything, I just, the whole street, the whole street. And it's just, yeah. And, and first off the bat, I did want to ask you, like, do you think you could fool somebody with this movie? Do you think you could put this movie, uh, you could tell somebody, do you think you could put this movie on to a, to somebody like a friend of yours or a family member under the pretense that it is a, meet cute rom-com <laughs> yes uh it, as long as you didn't get to maybe about 20 minutes into the movie okay because i don't think you could i thought it would be a funny idea i don't think you could because the it starts with basically rain asmr like you're just yeah. hearing rain all around you and then you just hear ominous music yeah and then all you have is, and then you just hear women just wailing wailing crying, yeah, yeah it's and a screaming point, yeah. until until it cuts to georgina campbell's uh in the car point of view in the yeah, car yeah in the car and then maybe if you cut that first the, part you might be able to you, do if it if you start it right after she goes in the house maybe yeah so you have 15 minutes to convince everyone so airbnb fucked up they or or whoever they it's are getting their airbnb from airbnb, i don't know how airbnb works it's airbnb and home away so it's on two different apps Anyway, she tries to get in. So they fucked up and they double booked the place. Essentially, she tries to get in uh, the key uh, lock. What What is it called? Key the lock. little bo- the little key, key box. box. Yeah, that she opens it. There's no key inside. And she's like, you know, she's like, oh, fuck, which is a very genuine reaction. It's pitch black. It's the middle of the night. It's pouring rain and she has nowhere else she can go. Yeah. So she, it's a very, uh, that, that was a very believable reaction of her just being like, are you fucking kidding me? And it turns out there is someone staying there already. And he answers the door and lo and behold, ladies, it is Bill Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård. Pennywise the not clown looking, himself. Not looking like Pennywise. He looks normal. He yeah. looks, he looks, uh, he's a fairly handsome, normal looking dude. Well, he looks like Bill Skarsgård. No one quite looks like Bill Skarsgård. No, no, but he is, uh. He he's charming enough in this. Yeah. Uh, he him being cast in this is Zach Krager, he knew what he was doing. He's he's subverting our expectations essentially. He's like, "Oh, we all know who he is. We yeah. all know who he's played. He's in this. I, is this going to be that obvious or are we along for a ride?" You yeah. Know? Yeah, in the trailer it seems like there is something going on with Bill Skarsgård's with him, character. Yeah. yeah. He so is, it's he is in like, the trailer the most. Like it's like this ominous type of of feeling. But as it turns out, uh he's actually just kind of an awkward chill dude. He's just a dude who got woken up in the middle of the night by a lady who also booked the same Airbnb and he's he's trying to be chivalrous. He's trying to be, you know, Jordan Campbell is obviously you know very untrusting of this very guy. cautious as she should be this yeah. is a very un just a kind of a unique situation this is an uncomfortable situation unique situation no, no one wants to be in this yeah just to confirm that what he might be saying is true ask to go use the bathroom specifically just also to see does he have like a toiletry bag is this somebody that is actually traveling would book at the airbnb or is this a guy that just owns the house and is hanging around or did this guy just break in here yeah, you know what I mean, is he squatting? 
because he's squatting. She but, finds yeah. his she finds his ID, his toiletries bag. Takes a photo of his ID too, just, a- just to confirm, just to let her friends know if I if I go missing, it was him. It was him. <laughs> she asks him for his confirmation, his booking confirmation. Of and course, he's got all the evidence. He's like, yeah, no, they just double booked us. Like, no, neither one of us is at fault here. Yeah, this this girl really doesn't trust me. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, why would Who she? Who would? Yeah. I, yeah, why would she? I would, you know, I, I would be in that same situation. He's try- yeah, he's trying, though. <laughs> yeah. As it turns out, she tries to see if she can book another hotel, but unfortunately, there is a, some kind of medical convention in Detroit at that time, so everywhere is fully booked up. So Bill Skarsgård comes up with the idea to share the Airbnb. One of them will sleep on the couch. Whoever will sleep in the bed. She'll He'll sleep, sleep on the couch. He'll sleep on the couch, and they will get their money back from both these people. And essentially just have a free night of hanging out. They actually hit it off. Yeah. They, yeah, have, they, they have a good conversation. They, they hit it off. And not only that, they have good chemistry together, yeah. which makes me believe you could fool someone into thinking, no, this is a rom-com. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As it turns out, Bill Skarsgård is actually kind of like an uh, plays. His character is like kind of like an artist in himself. And he's aware of a, uh, a documentary that uh, the person Tess is interviewing for put out like a year prior yeah they so connect, it's kind they, of like a able to situation just randomly connect that way yeah and they have like a good heart-to-heart conversation while they're waiting for uh the sheets and blankets to dry because tess doesn't want to sleep in a bed that's already been used he stole her airbnb she stole his heart oh shit. my god <laughs> I, forget, I forget what it says it's but i want a parody trailer where it's just them like meeting and having a fun time together and then it's like the Shining parody trailer. Oh, yeah. You know the one I mean? About the family. Having <laughs> if, someone, a, if someone hasn't made that yet, they should. Yeah. Because <laughs> you could fool somebody with this movie. Regardless, both go to bed. Everything's fine. Bill Skarsgård's on the couch. Or is it? Well, something... Something is, weird happens. Is weird. The first night. The, and she... She... So she's falling asleep. She's asleep. And the door to the bedroom, which is locked, opens. Somehow she 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 uh, she wakes up and finds it open and she starts hearing noises in the house in the house and she discovers that the noises are just coming from him. He's sleeping on the couch and he's having like a night terror. He's having some kind of night terror where he's just like kind of shrieking in his sleep and yelling and that and she approaches him on the couch and wakes him up scares the hell out of him scares the hell out of him and he goes she goes did you open my door and he goes no it's just loud as you know just very defiantly because she he she obviously scared the shit out of him as asleep like, yeah he's he's he, he wasn't too happy about that yeah but cut to the next day he's gone to do whatever he's in town for when she goes outside and sees the neighborhood oh yeah in the light for the first time yeah yeah, it looks like it's it's just like looks bombed out. It, it, everything like it's just one of those neighborhoods because of how Detroit fell post automotive automotive industry leaving and how it became like that. It's just like one of those abandoned neighborhoods, specifically the area, the neighborhood of Brightmore. It's and, just it's just nothing. Nothing's there. The only house is the one she's staying at. Yeah, the only house that's running that looks passable is that Airbnb. That was a good reveal. I thought, because when she arrives, she can't see anything in the neighborhood when she looks around. She's on the yeah. porch. She's looking around. It's just utter darkness. And then when she walks out the morning up, the morning after and she sees it, she's like, oh, <laughs> she's like, damn. Yeah, and, even the, and even the documentary lady who she's interviewing for says like, oh, you shouldn't be there. Yeah. No, I, I highly recommend you get out of there. Leave that part of the city. <laughs> And she gets chased. As soon as she gets back to the Airbnb, she gets chased by this hooded figure running up to her. He's like sprinting at her too, yelling and yelling, saying, like, "Don't go, don't go in that house, don't little girl, get little away, girl, get out of that, get house. out away from that house, get away from that house." And she, <laughs> she is obviously freaked out. She locks the door. She calls the cops. They nothing. They don't do anything. Cops don't care. Oh, did the cops in this movie are the worst? <laughs> see 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 in in horror movies there's two types of it seems like there's only two types of cops there's just highly incompetent police officers that suck or apathetic or 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 the lead character is is a cop or you have like just apathetic like it's it's fallen or something like denzel and fallen or something you have or you have like apathetic cops where it's just like they don't care and these are the don't care cops these are the these are the very don't care cops 
She has to go get more toilet paper for the bathroom, and it's in the basement. She has not been to the basement yet. Yes. And the basement has a feature where it's a spring-loaded hinge, and it locks from the inside of the basement. So there's a good chance... That's a horrendous design flaw. Or... Or... An intentional design. Yep. Uh, That was never... uh, Never fixed. Yeah. So she's stuck in the basement. And this is where the movie takes its next turn with you. She finds a rope sticking out of the wall, sticking out of a hole in the wall. And she decides to pull it and it opens a secret hidden door. A Scooby-Doo door that is pretending to be part of the wall. (laughs) And there's this dark hallway with a light at the end. She says nope at it immediately and says I'm not going down that, which is the right move. Don't go down that. And she unfortunately decides to in this. Check it out. And at the end of the hallway, she finds a room that has three things in it. A camera on a tripod, a, a bed, bed with a terrible worn out mattress, gross mattress, and a bucket. And a bucket and there's like a hand there's a bloody on a hand wall. On a wall. <laughs> the door locks from the outside it's smeared it's gross it's disgusting and anyone and in their she, right and mind she gets the fuck out of there would get the fuck out of there she gets the fuck out of there bill skarsgård comes back she she is banging on the window of the of the basement the basement window and gets yeah. his attention and he gets in the house lets her out of the basement and um she is rightfully like, we need to leave <laughs> immediately. It's like, we need, <laughs> we need to leave to right leave. now. Bill Skarsgård's character, even though he says he believes her, wants to go investigate this for himself. <laughs> he is white. He is white and he is a man. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is where it Hell kind yeah, of bitch. turns. She, he asks her to stay. So that just in case the, the fucking basement door closes on him. He goes down there and he confirms with her by yelling back to her. just like, yeah, I see the room. And she yells for him and he doesn't respond. He doesn't respond. She, just to make sure, puts a chair on the basement oh, yeah. door. She, she fully has a whole I got to do everything myself moment. Yep. She puts a chair in front of the door. So it doesn't close she on gets her. A, she gets her phone. She goes down there and she walks down that hallway. And, and we're going to leave it right there for right now. Are we? Okay. Because there's some stuff that goes down in that hallway and I don't want to spoil anything. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and leave oh, that. Okay. But it cuts to black and we are let in with Donovan's Ricky Tiki Tavi. Sung by Justin Long sung driving by, down the coast in his convertible. Sung by Justin Long playing the character of AJ driving down Pacific Coast Highway in LA in a red convertible having a great time for at least the next 20 seconds having a great day he is like he is nothing nothing could possibly go wrong like everything is totally kosher with him we have taken another complete left turn in the movie the tone has shifted completely (laughs) we are way off from where we were when we started a whole nother movie starts it's pretty much a whole nother movie yeah and he is great in this movie. Everybody is great in this movie. The performances are fantastic, but he especially is a standout. He does so well at being one of the worst fucking he people the, I he, have ever seen. Without giving too much away, he is an actor working in L.A. He's a big up and coming actor. Up and coming actor. Like. He's 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 like a hot new celebrity, I guess. But. He gets a phone call while he's driving and it turns out his co-star, the actress co-starring with him, has accused him of straight sexual assault. Yes. And it is clear that this isn't some bullshit. This is something that definitely happened based on his reaction. Based on his reaction. He she says that his agent says, yes, she's saying that you sexually assaulted her. I'm not going to say the R word. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> cutting that. Uh, it's, that was Kate Bosworth. Yeah. On, yeah, the, on the radio. Yeah. She <laughs> has the voice of his agent. She, little, uh, uh, little cameo there. Saying that you did this, you are going to be facing an actual criminal investigation. And he is noticeably upset and calls the co-star who said this later a bitch well no he no he calls her a oh, bitch call- at the time uh this, oh yeah he he, he really he, he really says jo- that, he, he's just immediately is thinking about himself he really jonah hills this it, uh oh, that, that, that <laughs> fucking bitch 
this fucking bitch. Yeah, this fucking he bitch. Is, yeah. It, so immediately you're just like, uh, yeah, he did that shit. He did something. He did that shit, and all he thinks about is himself. Immediately, he just immediately. Like, okay, well, I'm off this pilot. I need money. I need money. I don't like. Uh, we're gonna. I'm totally gonna win this thing because I didn't do anything. And so he's gonna it, defend himself and then counter sue her for defamation. I guess, yeah. And then he he immediately goes to his uh, his finance his uh, financial advisor. Yeah. To find out, okay, I'm gonna need to pay for this attorney. I'm gonna need to pay for these legal fees. He finds out that like his mortgage in L.A. is what's really sinking him. So he decides to go sell off properties that he owns. One of which being, I think he has a few in Detroit because he's he, from Detroit. He's from Detroit. His character's from Detroit. He's from Detroit, and it ties back into the first movie we were watching <laughs> because he owns that Airbnb. He owns that house that, that he they, rents out to people. That Bill Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell double were staying booked. in <laughs> scumbag. <laughs> this, he is. He is so perfect. He's at so playing good this. at he this. He is character. good. He is so good in this. And it's a wonderful return to horror for him because we're so Justin happy to have Long, him back. Justin Long is what other shit has been besides uh well, you know, cheap oh, God. We'll, we'll, just, we'll distance ourselves from that. <laughs> I may have to bleep the name of that movie. But he but he is famous for that movie. Uh yeah, I mean he's in a Dodgeball. Drag Me to Hell. Drag Dodgeball, me to- Dodgeball's not a horror movie. Well, as far as horror, yeah. He's in Do- As far was- as horror, like Drag Me to Hell. Um <laughs> this is this is a uh, I have not gotten around to seeing Tusk yet, but uh, I know that one's that uh, one's pretty good. I that, like that. Oh, one. is it? OK, yeah, I enjoyed okay. it. OK, I feel like we can't go any further with this without spoiling. So we're going to go ahead and leave the story there. It's kind of like three different movies that start to tie into each other. Well, two movies and one small insert. And, you know, I feel like that's good. Should we uh, should we move on to the facts section? Yes, yes. These are real facts about the movie that I've researched and written down. Nick has never seen them, but he's going to read them live for you. And this is also the smallest fact section I've ever had because I couldn't find facts that would spoil the fucking movie at the uh, end of it. There you so go. I, I didn't want to do that. So we only have three and a what a story. So go ahead whenever you're ready. Fact number one. Barbarian was released on September 9th, 2022 to a $10.5 million opening weekend. It earned a total of $40.8 million while in theaters, placing it at number 3,285 on the all-time inflation-adjusted domestic box office list. Some of its competition in the fall of 2022 included Top Gun Maverick, starring remarkably less homoerotic undertones than the first one, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, starring Angela Bassett, who did the thing, and most importantly, Orphan First Kill, starring Isabel Furman with a twist you won't see coming. <laughs> we both love our Orphan First Kill. We liked Orphan we First Kill a lot. We love the shit out of that. It's we'll do better than the first one, kind of. Well, uh, it's just as good, if not better. I will maybe do that one later for fun, but that is a... When Orphan 3 comes out, we will do that. I think they're probably going to make Orphan 3, to be honest, with as, as good as Orphan 2 did. Um, Yeah, so Barbarian, obviously very recent. Uh, a lot of movies that came out were long time uh in theaters top gun maverick was in theaters i felt like all of 2022 oh yeah that doesn't happen anymore no i mean everything usually goes to streaming almost immediately you know Mm -hmm. after just at least like three to four weeks tops do you want to take a guess at highest grossing uh domestic movies international might be it's kind of like the same ones but it's just kind of varied where they come in in top places you know what i mean domestic uh top gun right top gun's number one Top Gun's number one was Avatar number two? Uh, Black Panther was number two. Got it. Black Panther. Um, number, Doctor, Doctor Strange? Doctor Strange, the Multiversity of Madness, uh, directed by our man Sam Raimi. Yeah. Which is the closest to a horror Marvel movie we've ever gotten. Yeah. Uh, number four? Number four. Was number four Jurassic World? No. Number four was... You, you said it already. I said it? Yeah. Avatar? Avatar. Oh, Easily okay. That. And number five is... Number five, Jurassic World. Jurassic World. Jurassic Dominion, World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we help contribute to. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to hear what happened to us at that theater. Yeah. The, which, which uh, we don't wish on a lot of people. We don't wish on anyone unless you have no time. And yeah. Like nothing to do that day. And neither, and we didn't. So we were, we were not displeased. We'll just say that. <laughs> of happened. course. Shall we move on to fact number two? Fact number two. 
Zach Krager stated that he had a hard time getting the movie made due to its very unconventional style and plot, with even A24 turning it down. But 20th Century Studios finally agreed to take a chance and fund it. Really, A24? You wouldn't produce this. You! The studio who made the movie about the man turning into a lobster, or the one about a guy dragging Harry Potter's dead body around for 90 minutes. This is a step too far. This is where you draw the line. (laughs) This we, feels like a movie A24 would do. Do what you know they, what I mean? What do they call it? What do they, what do they call it? Swiss Army Man? We, Swiss, Swiss, Army Man Swiss Army Man, yeah. We, weekend at Harry's. Weekend at Harry's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this, Swiss Army Man. I would, and then no, they, I'd buy this as an A24. Yeah, if, if, you just told, feels, if you told me, yeah. With the modern, you know, kind of horror movie that like A24 is doing between Ari Aster, between like the one that's coming out, Talk to Me, that seems all that stuff. Like you would think this... This seems exactly like something A24 would do, but they didn't want to do this. Yeah. this. Do you think this could be on Disney Plus someday? <laughs> I don't think so. I have no idea. Act number three. There's been speculation as to why the film is titled Barbarian. One reason being that the house number used is 476 Barbary Street, which is when the barbarians invaded Rome. Another is that Barbarian is spelled using the same letters as Airbnb. However, I think the name is due to the fact that the Airbnb is on Barbary Street, making it the Barbary Inn. I like it's the Barbary Inn. The Barbary Inn. 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 It's like the bed and breakfast, you know, Inn. Uh, Oh, nothing. I want you all to boo this part when you listen to it. Just get, I just get a bunch of thumbs down on this part of the video, (laughs) (laughs) this part of the podcast. (laughs) So the what a story mark is the most ridiculous fact. And this one's actually more of a discussion we can have as well. Actually, this is kind of personal as well with my experience with the movie. But go ahead. (laughs) What a story mark. All right. The what a story mark that Nathan has given to me for this movie. The script started out after Zach Kreger read Gavin DeBecker's book, The Gift of Fear, which encourages women to trust their intuition when confronted by obviously dangerous men. This is reflected by Tessa's line about women having to be careful while men can go through life making messes. Very good line. I, Nathan, saw this movie three times in theaters and found that no one in the audience yelled at Justin Long or Bill Skarsgård for entering the tunnels, but everyone threw insults at Tess for going to try to save both of them. Ironically, women were the ones that yelled the most insults. (laughs) No, this is true, and we can have a little bit of a discussion here. It was something I noticed where... You know, Tess has a line in the beginning about when she's talking to Bill Skarsgård about relationships when they're actually hitting it off in the Airbnb, which is like, you know, men, you know, I if, if the situation had been reversed, I would have never let you into this Airbnb. Mm-hmm. She would have never let Bill Skarsgård in. And Bill Skarsgård points out that that's a little bit of a contradiction. Right. But she goes, of course not. And she's like, men get to go through life uh, making messes. And causing problems and not really facing a lot of consequences. Girls have to be very careful. Girls have to be very careful and stuff like that. And that's reflected in much in fucking Justin Long's character as well. Just going through literally the entire movie, magooing his way into trouble. Yeah, completely carefree. Causing problem after problem after problem. And he making messes, and making lots of messes. And he can't seem to understand why he should be held accountable for it. He doesn't seem to understand he's the problem. He's doing it. It's so it's so interesting. <laughs> but I found it I found it very unique that in the movie, even though Tess has Georgina Campbell has told Bill Skarsgård's character, Keith, there is something down there. Do not go. We need to leave. He goes, no, I want to investigate it for myself. Nobody in the audience talks shit to Bill Skarsgård on screen. Well, of all the times I was there, nobody laughed at, you know, well, we laughed at Justin Long for it, but nobody like told Justin Long, what are you doing? Don't go down there, you know, but every time Georgina Campbell even would investigate that room or go down the hallway or do anything, I heard some like really, really not pro women (laughs) shit said by women in the audience. Like you dumb bitch. What the (laughs) fuck are you doing? Or like stupid. And some some lady one time, the second time I saw was like stupid as hell. She's going to die. It's her fault. Like that. Like it's a lot of victim blaming in that. Is that victim blaming or are they just frustrated that this lead who is representative in the movie is making these choices well let me, are they, is is it just out of frustration or are they just or do they just not care about her? it could be both but also if you really think about it right 
let, let's let's say let's say the situation is reversed. Georgina Campbell goes down there and Bill Skarsgård goes down to try to help her. Right. That's the different story. That's like very that's very honorable. That's right? a more conventional conventional story honorable. because he's you go save the girl. You go save the girl. But now Bill Skarsgård's down there and he's having problems. Something's wrong. And she goes down to try to help him. What's what's the alternative? She, she knows she can't call the police. They don't show up anyway. No, they don't show up anyway. So what's the alternative here? Does she just like leave it? Because yes, every, you know, every common sense thing you should be taught says, do not go down there. All like, three screenings. There was somebody that talked shit on her every single screening. Like it was just, it was just fucking very interesting to watch. It was something I noticed. And I don't know if Zach Craig meant for this to happen, but it's worth noting that this happens. And yeah, it could be like, you know, with women in the audience seeing that they're frustrated about like, it doesn't seem like the character is very smart. I wouldn't do that. But what yeah, they're yeah, thinking. yeah, it's like, I wouldn't do that. You're being dumb. Why would you fucking go do that? But at the same time, it's like she's trying to help each of these people in the eyes of an audience. A man makes a mistake and it's just like, we are so used to men being leads in the movie. We go, yeah. okay, this is what's setting the story off. Another, another thing it could be is, um, Georgina Campbell has spent the first half of the movie being the voice of reason, being just like the one making all the right decisions. Yeah, that's a good point. And and so making making the right decisions, making the right calls, just having like the correct judgment, the logical, safe yeah, judgment, being, yeah. being very logical most of the time. So maybe that could factor into it of just, you know, we're watching that we are rooting for this person because so far they're doing good. They're doing it right. Yeah. They're doing what, what any of us would do. And now it's like, okay, that all, I can see why people would be like, that just flew out the window when she made those choices. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I get that. It's just, yeah, it's also, I, it, it might just be a trend in movies for you to just like shit on a female character easier than, than a man, Could you know, be. you know, because we're more used to like male centered movies, you know? Yeah. It's just something I wanted to bring up and you know, we could fully say, we don't really understand what it's like to be the experience of that at all. Right. Like we, we don't no, have we, any we, we context. Never, it's called one and a half white guys for a reason. Yeah. We, we never could. <laughs> we never, never could. It's just, I, I don't bring this to bring this up to try to, you know, Match soapbox experiences. or match experiences this is just a very interesting thing i was noticing continually no, in the movies is. it's just it was worth noting and i don't even know if zach Kreger knew that that was going to happen something just i noticed please let us know if we're just a bunch of you know chuckleheads just uh stroking ourselves right now <laughs> Uh, Nick, what would you rate this What a Story Mark? This What a Story Mark? This is a good solid 3.75. All right, 3.75. Because, because, got it, it's, got it. it's because it, is, it is a ha-ha story. Um, and yeah, that, you had a lot of interesting things to say about it. Nice. Uh, didn't make me laugh, though. Fine, fair enough. <laughs> For next bit, pitch me the sequel to this movie. Oh, the sequel to Barbarian? The sequel to Barbarian. Oh, Without man. giving too much Without away. Without giving the story away? Let me ask you this. Does it have to include characters or can this be like a whole new story, like a kind of an anthology? Um, no, milk it in the worst way. Bring everyone back. Oh, my <laughs> God. All right. So here's here's how it starts. It, it was a smash hit. It made it. it what, what was its budget? Uh, I think it was only like something like 10 million, 10 million. Imagine it made 500 million worldwide. Oh my and God. They were like, and 20th century studios was just like, we have to make dollar barbarian signs. too. We have to make barbarian to electric barbarian. Lou barbarian, Lou barbarian Two starts at Justin Long's trial. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I laughing? Why am I That's laughing? Not funny. This is not funny. That's not funny at this all. This is not funny. Uh, <laughs> Justin Long has learned nothing and is stained <laughs> still the same piece of shit that was before, except now he can't sell the fucking house. <laughs> he learns that one of the character witnesses for the uh, prosecution is Georgina Campbell, <laughs> who is going to give an account of what happened in the first movie <laughs> just to get away justin long decides he's going to personally rent an airbnb somewhere far away from each of these places and ends up somewhere like florida 
to stay. Okay. In there is not somebody living underground, but somebody living in the bat walls, walls, bad Ronald style. <laughs> this is the boy. This is the boy. Robin, the boy. Uh, it leads, it leads into that. I don't know. That's my, and idea. it's revealed to be Bill Skarsgård. And Bill Skarsgård <laughs> is living in the walls. Yeah. This movie has a lot of good twists and turns to it. Uh, we don't want to, uh, go into any of them, but, um, they, you really don't expect anything. <laughs> Whatever happens in this movie, you really don't expect any of it. Yeah. Uh, Zach Krager has talked about multiple interviews about his, you know, inspiration for doing this movie with uh, the gift of fear. But his original draft for this was a 30 minute short about a woman going to an Airbnb that's already occupied. And choosing to ignore an increasingly obvious series of red flags from the guy and that was the short, the original idea mm. that it was going to, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And that she is just choosing to ignore it because she's trying to go along to get along and it ends, you know, badly for her. Bill Skarsgård opens the door. He's just dressed as Pennywise. Pennywise yeah. so, oh, that's an obvious red flag. And she's <laughs> just like, oh, I don't know. Balloon. Oh, look, he's nice. He's a clown. I like clowns. That'd be even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's how it started. And it kind of built into this bigger uh idea and kind of just kept getting more and more kind of absurd and insane but so well done um i think that this movie really hits on essentially the worst type of extremes of what it's being because if you were to take justin long's character to the extreme it's richard brake's character does that make sense yeah yeah absolutely and if you were to take Justin Long's character and just make him kind of awkward, but no ill will, you know, doesn't do anything wrong. You know, not that type of person. He's kind of Bill Skarsgård's character where he's just like an overly confident dude. He's just a little awkward, but not really dangerous, you yeah. know? And so it kind of gives that like levels of hell of fear that, you know, specifically women deal with. And that's kind of why I really enjoy this movie more than anything mm -hmm. so i think we can uh we can rate this movie uh what do you think you want to rate the movie rate the movie okay i will give it out of 100 what would you give it an 82 82 it's good it's yeah. very good yeah i'm gonna give this i'm gonna i'm pretty close to that on that as well i'm gonna go ahead and give this uh like an 80 nice 80 so 80 plus 82 divided by 2 is 81 so solid solid score for barbarian yeah i really enjoyed it check cannot it highly recommend it enough we will have the locations for streaming check it out it's on max right now it's on. oh it's on max so perfect it's there and it'll be in the description of the podcast episode on spotify or wherever you get it from with the links now we will have to see if nick can get into the club or the Airbnb. Or you want to get into this Airbnb? <laughs> you don't want to get into this Airbnb. You should go somewhere else. It's better to just sleep outside your car. At You're going to let me in the club that, uh, or the bar that Justin Long is Zach talking, Krager Zach Krager <laughs> talking about it. This is, again, the arbitrary, completely up to me choice. Nick is a patron trying to get into the club. I am the bouncer, and I'm just going to let him in if he can name a movie that I uh, like and enjoy and if he does i'll let him into the club nick in the vein of the location just because i don't feel like it gets enough love and both uh james and chelsea from dead meat are from this city can you give me a movie that takes place in detroit for the first 20 minutes beverly hills cop oh my god you're right <sighs> all right Boot up the Axel F. Nick can get into the club Hell here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll get two like Beverly Hills Cop yeah. a lot. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh the heat is on. <laughs> oh my god! I was thought you were gonna say uh, it follows. Uh, no, I I I knew you were gonna say Detroit, and I was gonna be like, well, how about Catherine Bigelow's Detroit? <laughs> that is one yeah so that will do it for this episode of the one and a half white guys podcast or more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies be sure to listen rate and subscribe to us wherever you are listening and get your podcast from and be sure to follow us on our instagram page at one and a half white guys podcast and on our tiktok at one and a half white guys and be sure to tell a friend about the podcast where we say we're going to talk about movie and we kind of talk about the movie. Nick, do not pull that rope out of the wall.
I already did. Oh shit! Okay, we're gonna. Uh, 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 it didn't open. It didn't quite open a door. It opened the attic. Oh no! <laughs> I see some fingernails coming out of there right now. Okay, that's gonna do it for us. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye forever. <laughs> Chadwick Boseman's not in it, dude. I haven't seen it. He's dead. Oh, I thought he's fucking dead. He's not in it. They didn't film anything of it. Oh shit. Okay. No. I, I thought he just only looked at IMDb and said he would be in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep this in. Put this at the. Put this at the very end of the episode after the outro music. <laughs>